don't know what I did to make everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody I don't know what I did to make everybody hate me, oh nigga, hate me. The slip of my tongue, trick the finger for fun. You know I got this trick finger, man, they know how we do it on the heat. What's, what's up, what's up? up? If they come, it's the Kegel. He ain't waffles and bagels. What's up, Kegel? Don't even worry about that What's going on, everybody? This is your partner, film and TV producer, Don Trees Knox. Y'all may know me for hit shows like VH1 Behind the Music, Lil Wayne, History Channel, Gangland, featuring Soldier Slim, the new show with 50 Cent, Big Shots Out the 50 Cent Man, Hip Hop Homicides on Wee TV. You can catch me on Season 1, Episode 5. OG Black Boy 3700 is here now, Underground Source TV, with Quick Lessons, man. This is what I want to talk about today on Quick Lessons. Now, the stereotypical Chinese person and the stereotypical movie that shows how the cashiers are and most of the cashiers um during this time and our time right now are people that's not not from the united states or whatever they're you know, foreigners or whatnot so what we have is the movie menace to society everybody remember menace to society one of the great movies of all time okay inside that movie i remember old dog when old dog went in there and you had the the um oriental person and you know she was watching him and things of that nature. Okay, with with us coming from the you know the, the urban streets and ghettos and you know out there uh, the hoods, um, we know that that was a part of the movie that was true. You know what I'm saying? When you go into certain stores, especially those type of stores with those type of um, foreigners, they seems to be watching you and. Quick listen today is there's always somebody watching you. <laughs> and that's a lesson that everybody needs to learn because no matter how you think you don't got away with things, somebody, even if it's Jehovah God, somebody always is watching. Let me just say that. Somebody's always watching. And we we had those, you know, those foreigners in our stores. Growing up in College Park Projects, Ohio. And I can say they told the truth that men to the side there. Y'all know I'm telling the truth right now because inside that store, it's hard to steal. Y'all think about that. Inside the the stores that from the um, um, early, you know, we'll say Chinese, the Oriental, Koreans, you know, Ohio, we'll say Koreans, whatever. Um, it was hard to steal. And you know, even though, you know, I don't know if because of the eyes slanted, they can see better <laughs> or however, but in a Korean store, it's harder to steal out of there than any other store owned by any other race. And I have been in there and I have got away to be honest with you, but so many of my friends got caught in the Korean store stealing that it just made me stop. <laughs> and I'm serious about that. It just made me stop. But stealing out, you know, the the typical white American store or the black American store was very easy and you can do it frequently as you know you want to as a little kid. Cause you know you you know you won't get caught. You know, and you will get caught at the career store. So you went to the stores of the neighborhood that was owned by white American or either black American. <laughs> and in this case, in this case, it happened to me. Like I say, eyes are always watching. And in College Park, in the projects, we had um, three stores. We had, you know, we had three stores. We had um, Nifty, Nifty store that was located closer to um, City Hall 
and you know the College Park Police Station and the fire station and things of that nature downtown Main Street College Park. And it was a uh, like still a mom and pop store type, um, with with like a um one or two I say four gas pumps. Yeah, I say four gas pumps. And um, you know, it was a medium-sized store, and that was the only store that was owned or had a cashier or, or clerk that was um Indian, Raymond. Big shots out there, Raymond. We remember you, but we love you, though. But uh, <laughs> uh I poo for the ships. <laughs> but um, that was like the main store where um, you know. It, everybody went to to get you know um more variety and like i said it was on um it was at the top of um main street you know so up there towards the police station things of that nature you know like that like i say the city hall but then when you when you came further west when you came further west of in college park that's when you ran into um the korean store the Korean store is located like closer to the school and closer to the projects. But the Korean store wasn't owned by the Koreans when I was little. It was a black owned business. Mr. Bussy. Shout out to the Bussy family of, of College Park, Georgia. And um so, you know, of course, you know, Mr. Bussy and them got old or some whatever, and they end up selling the store to the Koreans. And, of course, I was still young at this time, so I grew up under the store being up under the Korean just as well as uh, Mr. Bussy. So, didn't mess with it. No, they were very nice. Like I say, they, we grew up together. I was, you know, they had kids, too, and, you know, you know everybody grew up together. It's, um, at times, they'll bring the you know the Koreans and bring their kids to the store to help them out and things of that nature like that. So, um, um, we grew up with that Korean store in now too, like I said, man. But my cousin owned was the black owned business, and he was the third store. His store was located on Harvard Avenue in College Park. And that's where I'm from, the hilltop, Atlanta Street and Harvard Avenue. And um they they was um coincide with each other, across each other. So my cousin owned the store on the hilltop, Charles Stowe, SQ Grocery. His last name was Charles Askew. Askew. And there was a store that I must say everybody stole from. And to be to be you no, know, isn't I mean, to be ironic about it. The black-owned business that everybody stole from my cousin's store. That was the only store out of the three stores that you could have um, get credit from. Where he would give you credit and you know pay back um, next week or when you get paid for the sugar or for the cereal or for the the, the flour things like that. And it's crazy that we took from him. You know what I'm saying? Um, but he he was the only one helping. If you know, you know, that was considered help because he helped you out, you know, that day or how. But me and myself, I'm guilty of it because he's a relative of mine. I go in the store and you know and, and stole things and stuff. You know, I was grew up in the store. I was a kid too, you know. So anyway, as an adult, yes, as an adult, I remember going into the store and he also did barbecue, you know, so he had a grill out there in front of the store. You know, he did slabs of ribs and, you know, baked beans and just whatever he sold or whatever. Um, he had a little, you know, um, um, food section back there in the back. And one day I come up there and I ordered some nachos, also sold nachos. And I knew that when you order this food, he had to go to the back to prepare it. And it leaves the store in the front wide open. You know what I'm saying? Everybody knew this. So one day he go to the back. Hey, no, hey, I need some nacho, Charles. What's going on? Cut he get some nachos, man. You know, like that. So you know he smoked weed. You know, even though just you know, you know, regular cousin, just like anybody else. You know what I'm saying? Um, you might walk to the store one day, it smell like weed or have. So yeah, Charles, man, you want to get some nacho, man? You doing all right, cut? Yeah, I'm doing all right, man. Yeah, I got your tree. What you want on? Man? I want them fully loaded, baby. So he go back there, and I 
still a king size sneaker. It's right now where he registered. He way in the back, y'all. I just steal it. Uh, get it. Uh, I got it. Put it in my pocket. Cool. Get the nachos. Pay for them. All right, girl. Appreciate it. <laughs> and that's it. I done done this before. My cousins, my friends, you know, even adults, you know, especially the crackheads. So anyway, that's that. I thought nobody was watching. Like I said, of course, the more to the story is, somebody's always watching. So, of course, y'all know how this story ends. But two weeks later, I'm locked up. I'm on Wright Street, 901 Wright Street, Fort County Jail. <laughs> and at this time, you can call from the jail. Like, everybody used to call from the jail to the payphone that was on the corner of my cousin's store. Actually, it wasn't even on the corner. It was like right in center of my cousin's store. So, um, but everybody used to call that because that's where everybody hang at. The phone ring. Somebody going to answer the phone. So I was on Wright Street two weeks and uh, they had just gave me a bun. So I'm like, yeah, I had set enough for two weeks before I got a bun. I was so happy. So I said, man, let me call, <laughs> let me call to the pay phone. And see who out there. I'm trying to get in touch with my cousin Lil C, my little brother Main Main, and the heel chop Nori. You know what I'm saying? Timing. You know what I'm saying? All of us and stuff. So I call. Y'all like that? Y'all like that sound effect? <laughs> sound like one of them phones that you do that you do the run. But I called to the payphone. Somebody answer hello. I said, who it is, man? They done treat, man. Who it is? Who it is? Who it is? He said, it's Char. Oh, cool. What's going on, man? What's going on? Oh, man, man. How you doing, treat, man? Char, I've been locked up two weeks, man. They just gave me a bun, man. I'm trying to get into a court with my brother. Who out there? Man, I just need to talk to anybody, man. I'm just trying to tell them what my bun is. If I can get out, man. I need to get up out of this thing now, man. Man, who out there? <laughs> I said that, man. Char said, oh, everybody out here, man. Which one who I want to talk to? I said, court right now? I said, see right now? He said, yeah. I said, let me sit, speak to C. He said, yeah, I'll let, him speak, I'll let you speak to him after you pay me for that damn sneaker. And then hung up the phone. <laughs> hey, hey, my cousin hung up the phone on me, man. And, and when I called back about three, four times, man, nobody went in answer. But I guess they had on walked away. And my cousin would not answer the phone. For real, man. And I did not know that he was watching. He didn't have no cameras. He didn't have no cameras in the store, nothing. But he was watching me, man. And that goes to tell y'all, watch what you do. Watch when you do it. And know that somebody's always watching. Thank you for tuning in to another great episode of Quick Lessons right here with your partner, Don Tree Schnapps, a.k.a. OG Black Board College Park Stand Up. I don't know what I did to make everybody hate trees, everybody hate trees. I don't know what I did to make everybody hate trees, everybody hate trees. I don't know what I did to make everybody hate trees, everybody hate trees. I don't know what I did to make everybody hate trees, don't make us hate trees. I don't know what I did to make everybody hate Oh, nigga, hey, trees. The slip of my tongue, trick a finger for fun. You know I got this trick, man. They know how we do it on the heat. What's up? What's up? Is it coming to Kegel? He ain't waffles and bagels. What's up? Kegel, don't need to worry about them.